as we've seen, the diode equation models the exponential relationship between current and voltage in a forward bias diode. We've also seen that because this exponential relationship, a diode operates in a very narrow voltage band and goes from non-conducting mode to fully conducting over just a few tenths of volts. But diodes are generally found in circuits where voltages are greater than just a few tenths of volts. In many applications, a limiting resistor is connected in series with the diode. As the diode begins to conduct, the resistor absorbs a portion of the voltage in the circuit and limits both the voltage across the diode and the current flowing through it. The, this voltage splitting between the resistor and the diode establishes the bias point or operating point of the diode. This is represented in the figure here. The diode and the resistor combine to set the bias point of the diode. As the voltage across the diode opens to allow more current to flow through, the voltage across the resistor also increases as the current through the resistor increases and serves to constrain the voltage on the diode. The resistor provides negative feedback and an equilibrium of voltage and current or the bias point is established. There are two equations governing this equilibrium that must be simultaneously satisfied. The diode equation, which I've written here in its alternative form relating two different voltages and currents, um, but which came from the exponential model, and um, then also Ohm's law. And these two, these two equations need to be solved simultaneously or satisfied simultaneously. But because of the nature of the two, they don't lend themselves to a simultaneous or an analytical simultaneous solution. The graph of the straight line here is the graph of Ohm's law, and it's known as the load line. And then, of course, we've got the exponential model line there, and the point where the two intersect, that's the point that we're looking for. That's this equilibrium, pro equilibrium point or the operating point or the bias point. So graphically, we're looking for that point, but analytically, there's not a way to get to it. So because of this negative feedback, an iterative process can be used that will close in on the balance point or the bias point. We'll use that an example to demonstrate this process. To get started, let's assume that it's a one millimeter or a one milliamp diode, which means that we have 0.7 volts, or with, a, with 7 tenths of volt across the diode, we'll have one milliamp flowing. Say we're starting at some point right there. Now we'll use Ohm's law to calculate the current that the resistor would say would be flowing through this if it had 7 tenths of a volt on it. So this point right here would be the point 0.7 and the current would be 1 milliamp. Now using Ohm's law, we've got 5 volt source here, a 1 kilo ohm resistor, there's our diode. So we'd have then um, the new current, I sub D, would equal 5 minus 0.7 divided by 1 kilo ohm. So it's the 5 volts minus this 0.7 voltage that we're just assuming is a starting point. Divided by that then gives us an I sub D, which is equal to 5 minus 0.7 is 4.3 divided by 1,000 is 4.3 milliamps. Now we'll use this current and our 0.7 volts as our old voltage and the 1 milliamp as the old current to project or to calculate a new point on the diode equation line that would correspond to this 4.3 milliamps but now determine the new voltage. So we would have then V2 would equal our old voltage 0.7 plus 0 0.025 times the natural log of the new current here is 4.3 milliamps divided by the old current here which was 1 milliamp and when we do that we calculate a new voltage to be 0.738 volts so this point right here then is the point 0.738 is the diode voltage corresponding to a 4.3 milliamp current. Now we'll use this voltage here 
in our load line equation to determine a new current. And to do that, we have now then VDD, or the new I sub D will equal VDD, which is 5, minus the new voltage, 0.738 volts, divided by the 1 kilo ohm resistor, gives us then I sub D of 4.2 six two milliamps. So there's the four four point two six two milliamps coming across here. And now we'll use that as a new current. The four point three milliamps is the old current. We were here, we're now going to move on over to the the uh, diode graph again and we'll have then another V2 which will equal this time the old voltage was 0.738 or 0.738 plus um, 0 0.025 times the natural log of 4.262 divided by 4.3 and when we do that calculation, we get a new V2 equal to 0.73778 volts. And one final time, let's just go ahead and plug it into our I sub D, into the Ohm's Law equation, where we'll have now I sub D is equal to the 5 volts minus our new V, which is minus 0.73778 divided by the 1,000, and that gives us then point or 4.262, 4.262, which is the same current that we calculated before, at least out to the thousands of milliamps, or out to a microamp at any rate, we have now converged on our current. And so the point, the operating point, we would then claim for at least this iteration would be that the voltage would equal 0.73778 and the current would be 4.262 milliamps. 4.262 milliamps would be our bias point.